What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome back for part two, y'all, of our UConn versus NC State preview and prediction here, y'all. Oh, I guess not really prediction, more just preview here. I mean, but, uh, you know, we'll what kind of get to here? We'll do a prediction at the end. Yeah, we'll do a, a small prediction for sure. But definitely it's, uh, you know, yeah, I guess maybe more score predictions. Maybe yeah. because like last last in our we did like a season prediction and kind of like, did we win or did we lose? Maybe this is more kind of a, yeah, yeah. score prediction. I like that. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So if you haven't checked out part one yet, though, make sure to go and do that first and foremost here uh, as we can, as we started this conversation here with Mike Solomon and Pete here. Uh, and uh, again, make sure then after that check, after you check out part one, come right back here for part two as we continue, as we continue this conversation. So, uh, you know, Pete, I wanted to kind of ask you first and foremost, you know, obviously, you know, the basketball history for UConn is undeniable you know men's women's you name it. it's undeniable uh and you know you look at you know what football has done you know the the struggle that's been there for a while um you know but i because one of the first things kind of comes to my head is you know like there's there's definitely a lot of excitement for sure which is great uh but how much do you think that uconn the leadership and then the uconn fans are really you know looking to really commit themselves to supporting football because i mean i think for for me sitting here i'm saying you got two you know blue bloods you know in men's basketball women's basketball so i mean i'm sure they're not really going to take anything away from those two beasts they're going to feed that as much as they can but i I have a feeling that you're going to have to ask people to add on top of it to really add for football to try and build that up as well so kind of talk to me in terms of what's the mental status for you know football compared to you know the two beasts that you guys have currently in the UConn athletic program well well, I want to point out first of all Mike can probably attest to this in even basketball's history it was a tough sled and tough beginning um it had to be settled um by both coaches and what cured it the most was just winning uh winning big games um I think honestly the fan base also has to know our story a little bit more. I think the one thing that benefited us from this most uh, recent run of conference realignment is I think in me doing research, Mike doing research and other, you know, uh, independent journalists, fans, what have you look into the real numbers of what uh, we were really about as a program, we found our identity. You know, we, we've had a lot of turmoil with our leadership over the past, you know, decade, but, I know from my own research from 2009 to 2022, you know, we've produced more draft picks than about 60% of the Big 12 when we were comparing it in that 50, in that 15 year span. And we produce more first to third round draft picks than 75% of that league incoming and outgoing. So mm-hmm. despite all of that, all the narrative that's being pushed, we, we've pushed out at least very good player development. Um, which attests to the facilities we have. You know, we hear a lot of narratives about we don't have facilities. NFL scouts come to us all the time and tell us that only Oregon has better facilities than we do in the country. I mean, they're wow. telling us that. So That's I know the narrative statement. of, you know, different uh, reporters says different. You know, quite frankly, they don't look into the, to the, to the numbers that we have. And also sure. comparatively yeah. speaking, um, our program compared to other men's sports, you know, some of our pros, some of our guys that have two plus years, they, they established pro careers at a higher percentage than the men's basketball team over certain periods of time. So it's not like we can't produce players and, and, and get them out to the pros. We just have had to have stability and leadership, stability in a direction. And most of all, the fans have to know that. A lot, unfortunately, a lot of the local beat writers are also graduates of other colleges. So they're not mm. invested in you know, digging into the history of our program, the history of football in general in our state is very rich. You know, some of the beginnings of, of the sport itself mm-hmm. revolve around Connecticut. Um, yeah. So it's getting that story out to the fan base um, and having that identity known and then just winning big games. So, you know, this is probably a pipe dream, but if we go down to Tennessee and beat them, it's a wrap. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, Dude, right? Yeah. No, yeah. I'm just, I, mean, I mean, I mean, no way better. I would to get, put it past you. Yeah, no way better to get it going, right? When you beat a major program, right? Um, you know, with, that has you know not only SEC title hopes but national title hopes, right? Um, yeah, yeah. No, good. That's, that's definitely true. Um, 
So I guess yeah. kind of along the lines of that, how much of an advantage or disadvantage is it they're playing in Hartford? Because I know, you know, UConn's, uh, you know, campuses and stores, but like, and I know they're not very far apart, but, you know, to me, I, I look at it kind of like, and again, this is a guy from the outside looking in. To me, it looks like a, a pit situation where you you have campus and they go play in an NFL stadium. Same with Miami. You know, they're UCLA, not playing right? UCLA. Yeah, exactly. Here's, here's how I look at it. In terms of exposure, maybe the last six-win team that got as much exposure as we did last year. Okay? Yeah. Who fair. else is a six-win six team is going to get on, is going to be a leading story on all the highlight shows in ESPN, CBS, Sports Network? And the reason mm-hmm. is this. Those two entities, CBS, particularly ESPN, they're in Connecticut. Or, you know, they have employers or employees mm-hmm. that, travel into New York from Fairfield. When hmm. we get going and we have, you know, little human interest stories or little things like when we win and beat Liberty, their kids are talking about. Mm-hmm. They're bringing it into the home. Yeah. Of those producers and everything. It's unlike any other part of the country. And that's mm-hmm. why we're starting to get um, whispers in, into exposure, despite just only winning six games. That's the same dynamic that happened with the women's program. They were mm-hmm. winning, winning, mm-hmm. winning. The kids were talking about it, bringing it home to the homes of producers of these na- major sports broadcasting programs. Before you know it, they're the darlings of the nation. So yeah. that's the unique dynamic I think Connecticut brings in terms of exposure that I don't think any other uh, school really has. Um, great point. Right in between the two one of the two largest media markets in Boston and New York as well. So when it starts to hit these national media centers, it just expands and it's just, it can explode. You know, it happened, mm-hmm. the same thing happened with the men's basketball program. I mean, you know, we got exposure and, and you know, we're a brand now. Yeah. Little, I tell you, if, if UConn football figures it out, you're going to the ACC or big, big 10, big whatever the heck they're calling it these days um because (laughs) you're right you you, what you bring in women's basketball and men's basketball if you can get football on board i mean you can go write your own write your own check i mean you know you you can just put as many zeros as you want you'll have you'll have suitors um Uh, we we have an interesting oh go ahead it's about getting getting our brand out and and Mm -hmm. getting our story out as a football program i think a lot of the stories that have been written about us in the media, a lot of it's political leverage. It's, it's fighting for money because we mm. got the goods. I mean, no one can use the excuse that we're, we're, we're a bad or a garbage program when we're producing the players we're producing. Sure. You know, it's not right. total garbage. I mean, even at a, at a rate that, you know, in certain uh, areas of time, it's more successful than the men's basketball program. You can't use that argument against us. Sure. So, Go ahead, Mike. One of the interesting dynamics just of, of the University of Connecticut generally is we're really a coach's school. Like when you think of UNC, I mean, and Duke, they're um, destination locations for a lot of players. UConn's mm-hmm. been a coach's school. We've had a Hall of Famer in Jim Calhoun, a Hall of Famer in Gina Wariyama. We're, we now have Jim Mora, who is an NFL great coach. I mean, he's won playoff games in the NFL. He's been a top 10 uh, at UCLA coach there. Um, mm-hmm. We have a Hall of Fame baseball coach in Jim Penders who gets us to regionals and super regionals pretty, pretty regularly over the last 10 years. So yeah. we've the mistake they made with football is they had, we had bad, as Pete has already noted, we had some bad leadership athletically. We had some bad leadership at the top, and they didn't bring in the right people uh, for football, but Pete is right. Our um, our facilities are amongst the top five percent in all of football. As good as as good as Alabama, as good as Auburn and and Tennessee. Um, and yeah. I think if you wanted wow. to, you could probably go to UConn.com and just get a, a video tour of the entire facility. It's phenomenal. Our uh, basketball good one. facilities wow. are as good as they come to. No, there's some good ones. I I did watch your videos on uh, YouTube, and yeah, I mean your football locker room was nice, and uh, yeah, there's no doubt it's that crazy. you're putting money into the program. Now you just got to go put it out on the field. Correct. What people don't know about our facility is um, that weight room was custom designed by our old skate uh, 
strength coach, Jerry Martin, probably one of the best of all time. He was responsible for building the building blocks of all the athletic programs, you know, successfully. But he, mm. he designed the weight system itself. He told mm. me he tried to get it patented. So, you know, what we had was years ahead of everybody else. And still some, some programs are still trying to catch up because of his vision in the, in the, in the building and the program and his input as well. So, so, love it. so speaking of beasts, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll throw it out there with Jackson Mitchell, your linebacker, um, got, you know, you were talking earlier about, you know, NFL pro draft picks, and this is a guy by all, by all accounts, he's going to be, he's gonna be one of those guys that's called, you know, his name's called next year. Just kind of give me your thoughts on, you know, Pete, with you being a defensive guy and, and the, the, the uh, what we need to look for, because, um, he was pretty. He was pretty active last year in the game against State. But um, just kind of give me your thoughts on on his season, the potential for his season this year. This might sound outrageous, but I think he's a poor man's Luke Keekley. Ooh, um, wow! He's that cerebral. Do you really want to give a Boston College analogy though? Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking about Luke Keekley in terms of the Carolina Panthers. I got you, brother. I'm I got you. I'm just gonna I'm gonna bust your chops no. a little bit. But um. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've I've been that impressed with him, and you know sure. people don't realize also he did it with one hand last year. He had a broken wrist or a surgically repaired wrist that you know he had to cast it up most of the year. Mm. So I'm eager to see what he does with two healthy hands. Yeah, um, yeah, he's he's a baller. It's just drop the mic and just walk away. That's what he is. Um, yeah, and they got Lyman in there to protect him. I'm eager to see what he does after a year of. Uh, being in this defense that even Jim Mora said that they're trying to find their, their, their niche and um, their identity uh, during the first five games, switching from a three, four to a four, three, because he felt, you know, the personnel matched that scheme better. So yeah, yeah it's going to, it's going to be Jackson's a baller. You know, uh, Eric Haynes, our defensive end, he's a baller, you know, mm -hmm. six, six, two seventy. Um, He's yeah. going to be interesting to watch. And I think some of our secondary guys are very underrated in terms of what they bring to the total package. Um, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of guys got hurt, but a lot of guys got exposure and playing experience, and they're all coming back with some key transfers that are coming in from the Pac-12. So um, yeah. I'm going to be interesting to, to watch what unfolds on defense. Yeah, yeah how what our is secondary guys will be key to a lot of how successful we are this year. Because they have been kind of burned, um, not burned, um, hardened through the fire because they were thrown into some tough situations last year. So we'll see. I mean, in some, in some ways, it's a lot like uh, North Carolina State where you have a bunch of new guys kind of stepping in after losing some of your linebackers. So you got some new guys sure. stepping in, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, well the, and, and – Go ahead, Greg. No, I was just going to say the one thing that, you know, when I was looking through last year, and again, you know, every year's new, but you guys held five opponents to 14 points or less. I mean, that's, I don't care what league you're playing in, that's, that's efficient. And, um, you know, when you're only giving up 14 points a game, you're giving your chance, you're giving your offense and your team as a whole a chance to win ball games. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think they found their understanding of the defense and what, Coach Mora and the other defensive coaches wanted to do in terms of putting them in position. I think a lot of the early touchdowns, especially in the game against Syracuse and um, even against you guys, it wasn't that they weren't in position. They weren't, you know, the, the timeless men have been a little bit different, a little bit off, or just little technical things that, you know, at that level would result in explosive plays. And I think, um, you know, I think they're going to shore that up a lot this year, you know, having gone mm -hmm. through that kind of fire. I don't think this team's afraid of anyone in the country at all, having gone through mm -hmm. what they've gone through last year. Um, and they're, they're very motivated to make a point of, you know, going out and showing to themselves, you know, what kind of team they are. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dress-Up Insurance Group, that has our whole world covered, with agents in five offices throughout eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need, offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Dress-Up protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Dress-Up. 
You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. So let me ask you this, P, and just to kind of move, start moving into kind of the keys of the game. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you guys had mentioned, you know, about, you know, our, uh, you know, the linebacking core or, you know, the linebacking core and defense in general, you know, tough defense overall. Um, what are some of the things like when, you know, you and Mike look at NC State, what are some of the things that, that you say, like, wow, we need to watch out for that? Like, like, like kind of moving into kind of the keys. Go Robert ahead. Robert Nye and Brandon Anderson. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I mean that's – Wait, a, Brandon Anderson? Hey, man, Brandon Armstrong. Brandon Armstrong. Brandon Armstrong. I'm sorry. Brandon no, it's Armstrong. all good. You're good. good. Yeah. Brandon Armstrong. We, we, yeah. we got a couple of your names wrong, too, on your team, so we, we, yeah. we get it. <laughs> um, the transfer yeah. from Virginia, right? Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. You got it. I mean, those two work really well together at Virginia. And uh, mm-hmm. I saw what Anai did at Syracuse after just one year. And, mm-hmm. um. He's a good he's a good coordinator. Um, thankfully, we got a pro mind and another pro mind in Joe Pag- was it, uh, Pagano, Coach Pagano, who recently hired as a defensive co- consultant, also from the NFL. Oh, for the NAS mm-hmm. Colts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're yeah. old head coach. So, yeah, Joe Pagano. That's, yeah, that's going to be an interesting matchup. I don't have any doubt in terms of um, you know Coach Moore getting the players in position. It's just a matter of you know our guys executing. Um, yeah. and again, I think the focus is there, unlike last year. I don't think they're going to be searching where to go. Um, I think these mm-hmm. guys on defense, they're going to be ready to line up, get where they need to go, and, and try to make plays. Um, I sense a very high you know, motivational factor with these guys and have high focus. And it's going to be interesting to see, um, you know, especially on our yeah. home turf, what they're going to do. Yeah. I and, have a question. And, uh, oh, go ahead. Go Mike, I, was, I was going to say no, a question please. for you. So you lost um, Dre Thomas, Isaiah Moore, big mm-hmm. linebackers, big pieces of the defense. Mm-hmm. What comes? What's behind that? So, what, like, how do you follow that up? And are you um, able to like get the chemistry back in your defense? Obviously, you have real P five ACC level players, big solid yeah. guys. But on the linebacking mm-hmm. core, particularly. Is that a concern to you? I, I'll tell you this right now, that Peyton Wilson is a guy that if you'd asked me back in 2020, is he going to be here for another year? I'd say, no, he's going to go because he had all these injury issues. He's super duper talented, uh, can be a great linebacker. Cy, he has the size, he has the, the speed and IQ to play in the NFL. So I think he's going to go. So the fact that we are sitting here in 2023, and I'm telling you that Peyton Wilson is going to play linebacker it's for a us. Beautiful State, thing, right? Is a beautiful mm-hmm. thing, and that is a huge piece to build around. Mm-hmm. But also, too, secondly, in the fact that two guys that come to mind immediately, in, in, in Devon Betty and Jordan Poole, uh, being linebackers that have Jaylen experience. Scott. And J- sorry, you yeah, Jalen Scott. Poole. Yeah, it's all good. Sorry about that. Yeah, no, Jalen Jay- Scott. Um, you know, who were guys that back in 2021. Uh, played uh, like you know I know against uh, 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 Boston College actually uh, I think it was it was one of those two guys that came up with a huge uh, pass breakup uh, in the end zone to 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 take a touchdown away so I mean they've played in some big moments and easily could have transferred out you know but the yeah. fact that they've stuck around says a lot I mean because that's you know and that's why I respect a lot of what you guys are saying about the culture and you see it as well and the fact that we feel very strongly about culture as well and I think that in today's day and age with NIL, as I know you, Pete, you could talk all too much about, you know, loyalty is, it's not, it's not a thing anymore. Like loyalty is, is few and far between these days. So, uh, you know, to hear, you know, the, you know, the great culture, which it seems like Jim Moore is building within UConn is awesome to hear. And we definitely feel very strongly that from a culture perspective, we feel excited about it as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, go ahead, Greg. Yeah. If I could just piggyback a little bit, um, both Scott and, um, Betty, played extensively in 21 when both uh, Peyton Wilson and Isaiah Moore were out with injuries um, playing mm-hmm. basically a half a season each. Uh, so these are guys that are filling backfilling roles of key guys, but they have playing experience um, and, and, and significant in playing experience. Yeah. Um, and they have the leader. They have that guy. Cor- correct. Correct. So, so yeah, yeah, to answer long, 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 long answer. Um, I don't see any drop off. I would even challenge that we're actually going to be better at linebacker. Um, just because overall team speed, um, as great as um, Isaiah Moore and Drake Thomas were, they don't have the speed as of Betty and Scott. Mm-hmm. I want to know: Is Josh Harris coming back in those tackles? No, no, he's at he Ole Miss. transferred to Ole Miss. Oh, he did. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look real disappointed there, Pete. Well, yeah. I, I, we had a pretty damn good center who's in the Chicago Bears camp right now, and he put him on roller skates a couple times. Gotcha. Be quite Ooh. Frank. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Pete and I were talking last yeah. night, and he was telling me, he said, I looked at film, and they had some big dudes who were making major inroads and, mo- and moving the piles. Ah. Well, I mean, and luckily enough, too, I mean, for us, you know, I think the loss of Josh Harris might not be more of, you know, NIL might be have have some do with, it, especially since he has a you know a, a small you know, child a baby, yeah. you know, a small child, so which could definitely make a difference. Um, but I mean, also, I mean, like like we have, I mean, a guy like C.J. Clark, who's a guy that I mean has been a multi-year, fifth-year, you know, star now, and has just had injuries that have just killed him. But I mean, I think he's looking to make a statement, you know, being in his last year. So yeah, um, you know, hopefully, I mean, again, I mean, like for from my side, you know, because I mean, I, I mean, Pete, and Mike, I, I love you guys, you know, but obviously, I would love it if C.J. Clark did the exact same thing and put the center <laughs> on roller skates come August thirty first. But uh, yeah, no, Josh Harris is not with us anymore. So, um, but. Uh, I have a second philosophical question for you. Oh. So you have a, you a guy like Doran who's pretty conservative. As football coaches go, I, th- I put him on the conservative end of the, the scale. And you bring sure. in an A who... An I. An mm-hmm. I, excuse me. Who push, pushes the envelope. Okay? Yeah. A, lot, a lot more willing to take risks. Seemingly yes. some... Uh, counter programming going on here you know that they're going to approach the game sort of differently do you sense that's an issue or is that just a beautiful chemistry maybe that is starting to bloom i I would i would say that as as much as coach dorn's been here entering his 11th year now is that right 11 yeah um He 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 is not one to just sit back on his laurels and just go with status quo. He's willing to change up his offensive and defensive coordinators, his coaches as a whole. Um, he's willing to adapt to the game. Um, you know, have him being there as long as he has, he knows what it takes to win ball games, especially in the ACC. And you've seen him kind of slowly progressing to this. Um, you know, bringing in Tony Gibson a few years ago when he was basically thrown out of West Virginia. Um, that paid huge dividends and. Uh, I honestly think that we're going to get the same kind of thing with the Nye. Um, and just because like uh, um, a lot of the coaches have coached with coach and I in the past, and then obviously Doran coaching against a Nye, um, he, you know, he's come out and said that, Hey, I'm tired of getting my brain, my brains beaten in by this guy. I want him on my squad. So I think, you know, kind of with all <laughs> yeah. that being said, um, it just seemed like a no brainer match made in heaven, but again, proof will be in the pudding here in just over seven days. Yeah. Um, so to, to kind of wrap this thing up here, so I wanted to kind of, if you don't mind, uh, you know, Pete and Mike, I wanted to kind of give you, each of you guys an opportunity just for our fans. Uh, we'd love to know if state beats UConn, it's going to be because of what? And Pete, I'll let you go first here. Like, like if, if state beats UConn, it's going to be because this took place or this happened. It's going to be because defensively they're able to get penetration, stop our run, um, okay. put pressure up the middle. I'm, I'm fighting mm-hmm. now and mm-hmm. lock down receivers or receivers not being able to get off of uh, coverage and find open seams and get completions. Mm-hmm. We have to be multiple mm-hmm. on offense in order to, to move the ball. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, I was, I was there live at that game last year. And oh, really cool. Well, maybe not so I'd much I'd like for to him. see more from the offense <laughs> For sure. I, I think defensively, you know, one thing I did notice is that when we pressured the offense last year, we got through. And, yeah. um, you know, against an eye against Syracuse, when our guys were in the spots, you know, we did OK. We did pretty well. And we stopped their run game and they had a pretty good tailback last year. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's just being about, you know, being in our spots, being disciplined on defense and and. You know, making tackles, not giving up big plays, obviously. Just being basically mm-hmm. fundamentally sound. And yeah. uh, offensively, being able to move the rock, move the ball. And, you know, hopefully the new skilled players that we have, you know, go out and make plays. Yeah. Mike, anything to add to that? Yeah, I would say line of scrimmage. Um, if, if you dominate on the de- defensive line of scrimmage, um, mm-hmm. I, I think we're in trouble. But I would also say... Um, you know, uh, let me, I, 
your wide receivers versus our secondary. And, mm-hmm. You know, can you have you have got a got you got a guy with a great arm, okay? And if we're not yeah. able to stop him um, and his array of different uh, arsenal tar- uh, targets, I think we're in real yeah. trouble. But if we can pass, but if we can um, uh, stop, give Jim time. Pa- yeah, stop the pass. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I'm bumbling, but yeah, we're good. Um, yeah, if we can stop the passing attack. Okay, yeah. and keep the game close. Uh, yeah. I think we got a shot. Um, otherwise, sure. it could be ugly. Yeah, I'm worried about Armstrong's uh, legs. And um, see, that's a whole new thing for yeah. us too. Um, we got to contain him. And last year, we had yeah. a guy that was pretty good, a pretty good hybrid linebacker, Ian Swenson, who was a former safety, uh, mm-hmm. who fulfilled that role, and you know, kind of ball hawked a lot of you know scrambling quarterbacks for us last year. Um, yeah, that's the one thing I would say. There's a question mark on our defense. Who's who's going to accompany Jackson on the second level? Um, yeah, we got some transfers in. Uh, Noah Plack from Delaware, Eric Gilliard from Kansas. Uh, you know, some pretty good guys that were you know were pretty good ball players. I mean, Noah was a, was a safety at Delaware last year, so um, he might he might be comfortable in that role as well. So it'd be interesting yeah. to see. We, yeah. have, we have some pretty good tight ends, too. It would be interesting. We had a kid, Lou Henson, mm-hmm. out of Michigan. We had a kid mm-hmm. last year, Justin Jolly, who, who made freshman All-American team. Um, we have some good – I think there will be a lot of, of mixing it up. I don't mean to give away strategy because I have no clue, but I do think <laughs> that you, you, you'll see a mix, and that's, I think, Charlton's um, kind of uh, call to action a little bit. Yeah. All right, so now kind of to the good part, so the score predictions. Um, so, you know, being being that Mike and Pete, you guys are our guests, uh, you know, I want to kind of give uh, UP an opportunity first. What would you say your score prediction is going to be for this game? 31-28, North Carolina State. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, again, 28 points against us. I, that's, that's an accomplishment, I would say, for sure. Uh, Mike, what you got? I, I was going to go UConn twenty-one seventeen in a in a pretty epic upset. Um, wow. I have, it's early in the year, and we've got to look at it that way. I, I will yeah. tell you, I was uh, asked by um, a columnist online to predict all the scores for the NCAA tournament, and I predict everyone to be more than thirteen points. And at one point, You're he right. said, "I think they're really pushing it." I kind of got lucky, so I'm. Um, Hopeful that I can be lucky now. Well, and and I meant to give this before you guys get their predictions. But so kind of like right now, Vegas has state favored by fifteen, over under at forty eight. So right now they're predicting like, uh, like thirty That's to hard. thirty fifteen, thirty to fifteen score right now, give or take. That's uh, not which obviously, I mean. Yeah, I I think I mean that that's kind of what I'm I'm kind of thinking about the spread like maybe like a 17 point win right now like i I don't see i don't see a a beat the brakes i see a little bit of a slow start uh but i i my prediction is that once once we kind of find that crack that we're able to get through and kind of start to feel our rhythm and go from there so so my prediction is 31 to 14 that's my that's my prediction greg what you got i'm assuming you're taking state yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I had thirty-one seventeen state, so not not okay. not too We're far. Same ballpark. Yeah. Hey, Greg, yeah, let me perfect. ask you a question. Yeah. At, at the end of the ha- the first half, what do you think the score is? Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna go seventeen three. Okay. State. Seventeen three. Yeah. Interesting. I will say this: yeah. if our fans come out and pack that place. It's going to be a really close game and a possible upset. So th- that was my question. You, like, are you guys looking at a sellout? It's they're getting, pushing for it. They're pushing they're, really it, hard. It's getting there. Um, yeah. What do you guys hold? Place, like forty thousand? Yeah, forty thousand. Yeah. yeah, but that place gets very loud. Sure. Uh, um, when it's filled, uh, Robert yeah. Griffin the third has said it was probably the toughest place he's ever played at when it's been filled. Um, Interesting. So. If, yeah, if the game's 28-24, let's just say, if we manage to make it that close, 
I don't believe in moral victories, but I think at that point, the state might start to say, we got to get out there. Mm -hmm. This team's bringing something. So we would love a a game where we just compete head to head. Yeah. And we're right there with you. And I think that would be really important. So that's why this game, I think, might be one of the more important games in our history. I know the players will be motivated. I kind of as a big brother, I don't know if I've been blocked by this by saying it, but I kind of remind them of what the time is at, you know, what, 919 at certain points of the day is 41 to 10. Yeah. Hmm. They don't, they're not too happy with that. So sure. They, hmm. they remember that score. Yeah. They don't come yeah, out and say it, but they, they know that score. They remember that score. Yeah. They remember the feeling about it. Every player to a man, you, you're going to see at least, you know, the first couple of quarters, it's going to be, it's not going to be, they're not there to just show up. Yeah, sure. sure. I, I mean, I honestly don't see a 75 yard touchdown bomb on the first play of the game like we had last year. Right. Like, I just don't, I don't, yeah. I don't think it's going to be like that. Um, yeah. The, I guess the one other question I had is I would assume you guys are going to bring out the national championship basketball team to, uh, Give them some more love. Uh, first game of the season. You know, I have not heard. Okay. I, just I, would, I, I would think they would, though. Yeah. I mean, yeah. plus yeah. there's going to be a good crowd. I think there's going to be a real energy to the yeah. game. Um, yeah. you, you're a big piece of our season. There's no doubt about them. Much more than Tennessee on the road. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, again, I mean, you guys host Duke later in the season. Uh, you go to JMU, which I mean is going to be a tough game for sure. I mean, uh, so I mean, there's a lot of great opportunities on on the schedule for for UConn, no doubt about it. So it should be an exciting season for sure to see what UConn could do. But uh, Pete, Mike, first of all, thank you both so much for coming on. Really do appreciate it. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we kind of, you know, I mean, fortunately, I mean, we've we've we got so deep depth into football that it didn't really have too much time to talk women's basketball. But we're excited for it to host you all at Reynolds and uh, yeah, see we'll how have this you guys goes. back on for that. One. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I would I'm, love I'm, it. I'm, 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 OK, wouldn't be a bad idea. Love it. But uh, thank you both so much for your time. Really do appreciate it. And uh, looking forward to seeing you guys here in a few days and uh and just celebrate the, the the return of college football heading to 2023. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hey, let's yeah, talk yeah. after the game, man. For sure. Yeah, it would be an honor. Absolutely. Uh, well, Wolfpack Nation, if you haven't already, make sure to go and follow Mike and Pete. Uh, their uh, uh, Twitter links are down in the description below, so make sure to go do that. And then uh, for our end, make sure if you haven't already, again, hit that free subscribe button, hit that notification bell, which is free to do, and make sure you don't miss out on any new NC State content, and it really helps support us as well. If you enjoyed this conversation, if you think NC State's going to get that win, hit that like button. Also, too, make sure to give us a follow Tuffy Talk now on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok. And we'll see you all then. And go Pack, y'all. Let's go Pack.